Some discoveries, like x-rays, seem to come out of the blue, while others, like our next great discovery, develop over time, with one scientist contributing to the work of another. Vienna, 1846. A city of beauty and culture. But at Vienna General Hospital, there was the specter of death. Many of the women who came here to give birth were dying. The cause? Childbed fever, an infection of the uterus. When Dr. Ignat Semmelweis came to work at the hospital, he was alarmed at the scope of the problem and intrigued by a curious discrepancy. They had two wards. In one, the mothers were delivered by physicians. And in the other, the mothers had their babies delivered by midwives. Semmelweis noted that in the ward where the physicians delivered babies, 7% of the mothers died from what was called childbed fever. In the ward where the midwives delivered, only 2% of the mothers died from childbed fever. And this bothered him because physicians have more training. They're supposed to do better by their patients. Semmelweis was determined to find out what was going on. He noted that one of the main things that physicians did, that midwives did not do, was to conduct autopsies on these mothers after they died. Then they would go back and deliver babies or examine mothers without washing their hands, just like an auto mechanic who would finish up on one car and then move to the next car without washing his hands to get the grease off. He didn't see any reason to have to do this. Semmelweis wondered if the doctors were carrying some invisible matter on their hands, which they passed on to their maternity patients, causing them to die. To find out, he conducted a test. He decided that he would have the student physicians under his control wash their hands in a chlorine solution. And suddenly, the percentage of maternal deaths dropped to 1%. That's lower than the midwives. With this demonstration, Semmelweis realized that infectious disease, in this case childbed fever, has a single cause. If you eliminate the source of the infection, the disease does not occur. But in 1846, no one had made the connection between bacteria and infections. As a result, Semmelweis's idea was ignored. It would take 10 more years before another scientist would turn his attention to germs. His name? Louis Pasteur. Pasteur had lost three of his five children to typhoid fever, which perhaps explains why he was determined to find the cause of infectious diseases. It was Pasteur's work on behalf of the beer and wine industry that put him on the right track. Pasteur was trying to find out what was spoiling so much of the country's wine production. He discovered that the spoiled wine was contaminated by microorganisms, germs, and the germs were causing the wine to sour. But with a simple heat treatment, he showed that the germs could be killed off and the wine saved. The pasteurization process was born. So when it came to finding the cause of infections and contagious disease, Pasteur knew where to look. Germs, he said, cause specific diseases, and he proved it through a series of experiments and demonstrations that led to his great discovery, germ theory. The germ theory literally marks the beginning of modern medicine. The germ theory has one central idea, that one microorganism causes one disease in everybody. Now today this seems so obvious, but this is one of the most revolutionary concepts in medicine. 